Let's jump right into news. We begin in the Midwest where recovery is underway after deadly storms swept through the area Thursday. In Missouri, a duck boat capsized in rough waters, killing several people. The death toll is now up to 13 and more are still missing. And in Iowa, seven people were injured when a tornado hit a manufacturing plant. Other tornadoes throughout the state damaged or destroyed houses. President Trump has invited Russian President Vladimir Putin to Washington this fall, even as the administration is still dealing with the fallout from the historic summit. A CBS News poll found only about one third of Americans approve of the way President Trump handled the summit, but he does have the support of about 68 percent of Republicans. The NFL and the Players Union are working on a resolution for the issue of players kneeling during the national anthem. The update comes after a report the Miami Dolphins put the protest in a list of violations punishable with up to a four-game suspension. The statement says no rules will be enforced by the NFL over the next few weeks while they work out the issues. NFL preseason games start in two weeks. On to Firewatch, the Reynolds Lake Fire southwest of Darby has now burned more than 1,000 acres. The fire ignited Tuesday and is 0% contained. Helicopters are making retardant drops so fire crews can work closer to the flames. The incident commander says fuel conditions and snags that could come down in high winds are threatening firefighter safety. Weather will be a concern this weekend with storm fronts that could push the flames northeast towards homes in the community of Alta. In court news, the developer of the largest mansion in Billings who's accused of faking his own kidnapping in Virginia to flee massive debts pleaded not guilty in federal court in Billings Thursday to charges of wire fraud. 38-year-old Larry Wayne Price Jr. is facing six counts of wire fraud for soliciting $13.5 million from investors in a Wyoming company and allegedly using that money for his own use. The court indictment alleges that Price transferred money from banks in West Virginia, Texas, and Wyoming to his accounts in Montana for what he said was to buy real estate, mining equipment, and other supplies. In May, Price was charged in Virginia federal court for lying to federal investigators after he claimed he was kidnapped by a biker gang and robbed at his bike shop. If convicted, Price could face up to 20 years in prison and a $250,000 fine. He is not being held in jail. A Missoula man convicted of killing his infant son is a free man after a judge overturned his conviction and then granted a motion for his release on his own recognizance. Back in 2009, Robert Wilkes was sentenced to 40 years in prison after he was found responsible for killing his three-month-old son by shaking him. Then several years ago, the Montana Innocence Project took up the case, arguing that his defense attorney's help was inadequate. They also claim expert testimony could have proved the baby's injuries were consistent with a pre-existing medical condition. Wilkes served nine years before he walked out of prison as a free man on Wednesday. Innocence Project legal director Larry Manch says the state has indicated it will retry the case. On the campaign trail, Montana Secretary of State Corey Stapleton is asking the state Supreme Court to keep Green Party candidates on the November ballot. Last week, a state judge ruled that 87 of the more than 7,000 signatures used to qualify the Green Party for the ballot were invalid. Without those signatures, the party fell short of its minimum signature requirement. That ruling means the names of five candidates, including both a U.S. Senate and U.S. House candidate, will be removed from the ballot. The Supreme Court Clerk's Office says the court will likely consider Stapleton's appeal quickly because it is time sensitive. Montana State Auditor and GOP U.S. Senate candidate Matt Rosendale made a trip to the White House to discuss issues in workforce development and health care. President Trump invited Rosendale to attend the signing of an executive order creating a council of the American worker. As part of the event, a number of companies announced plans to expand workforce training and apprenticeship programs. Rosendale also took part in Montana Day, where local officials from across Montana were in Washington to speak with Senator Steve Day. Congressman Greg Gianforte and Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke. Rosendale gave a presentation about his support for alternative options for people seeking health care coverage. Rosendale says President Trump told him he will return to Montana for another visit later this year. 
Both the Republican and Democratic candidates for Montana's lone U.S. House seat have raised more than $400,000 since mid-May. Democratic nominee Kathleen Williams raised more than half a million dollars during the most recent reporting period. Advisors say much of that fundraising came after Williams' upset victory in the Democratic Party. Williams' campaign currently has about $460,000 on hand. Incumbent Republican Greg Gianforte also raised a little more than $400,000 in the last reporting period. Gianforte currently has more than $1.3 million in his campaign fund. Well, victims of sexual assault, domestic violence, and human trafficking now have an, an extra resource to help them succeed when they escape their trauma and abuse. The Billings YWCA's new Gateway Vista housing project officially opened Thursday with a ribbon-cutting ceremony. 24 affordable apartments are now open to low-income families and individuals. Victims of abuse will be given preference along with YWCA Gateway Shelter residents. Child care is also available for residents as the apartments are adjacent to the YWCA campus. In addition, those living there will have access to legal and financial counseling, job placement, education and mental health services. Elsewhere, fishing access sites along the Yellowstone River are opening back up after they were damaged by high water levels. Water flooded parking lots and damaged camping facilities, forcing Montana Fish, Fish Wildlife and Parks to make the sites walk-in only. Crews have been working on repairs since the water began to go down mid-June. Starting earlier this week, cars can once again drive into the sites. All sites in the region have been reopened except for Indian Fort on the Yellowstone near Reed Point and Grant Marsh on the Bighorn north of Hardin. Temperatures this week in Montana have been above average, but that hasn't stopped the football players preparing for the East-West Shrine game. The athletes have been practicing two to three times a day to get ready for the game this weekend. Coaches and trainers are making sure the players stay hydrated, cool, and well-fed. Water stations are set up around the perimeter of the field, and players have unrestricted water usage, so they don't feel that they have to wait for a break to get water. The players also have the opportunity to use the pool at Great Falls High School to practice down and or to practice after practice to cool down and relax. Well, mainly just being able to cool the temperature, you know, down between practices and making sure that they're not just sitting out in the sun all day. I think the kids getting back to the dorms, cooling down, resting and relaxing and then coming back out. And Ed, you mentioned that today and tomorrow hottest days for the next few days and big sky state games also happening in billings this weekend so staying safe and cooling down is important to remember that's for sure stay hydrated and as we mentioned before make sure you watch things as far as the interior of the cars too with those hot temperatures 